Since it was launched, the Star Adventure has established itself as one of the best and most reliable Star Trackers on the market. But is there any way to improve its performance even more? Hello and welcome to the Astronominas channel. I am Fabio and in today's video I will talk about an equipment upgrade. Those who have been subscribed to the channel for some time know that all my deep sky images are obtained with Skywatcher Star Adventure Star Trackers, whether in the Mini or in the 2i version. The Star Adventure is accuracy and reliability with short focal length telescopes is indisputable. The mini version is super compact and lightweight, ideal for wide field astrophotography and astro time lapses using the SLR cameras. It is powered by two AA batteries or micro USB port. It's controlled by Wi Fi using an application available for Android and iOS. Supports up to 3 kg of payload, but does not have an ST4 input for guiding, which is understandable in view of its goal to be extremely light and portable. The 2i version, on the other hand, is powered by 4 AA batteries or mini USB port, can be controlled by a Wi-Fi or a dial on the side of the equipment, with several operation modes, such as solar, lunar and astro time lapses. It supports up to 5 kg of payload and has the ST4 input which allows the connection of a guide camera, and right away it caught the attention of many astrophotographers, making the Star Adventure one of the best-selling lightweight equatorial mounts on the market. It didn't take long for users to realize the competence and reliability of the Star Adventure 2i, and soon began to attach bigger and heavier equipment to the small assembly. It was then the weakness of some components became more evident such as its equatorial wedge, which has very wide adjustment teeth, in addition to being unstable using heavier telescopes, which generally leads to imbalance during the operation, especially when the objects are located behind the equator line, causing the slight twist of the base. To work around this problem, more robust bases began to emerge, such as those produced by William Optics, Ioptron and AstroTrack, which are expensive and not very accessible. Here in Brazil, Astro Sigma has developed an extremely robust and precise equatorial wedge, with payload capacity up to 15 kg, completely manufactured in aluminum and stainless steel, with graduated adjustment of altitude from 0 to 90 degrees, and with locks in our rotation axis. It's this little wonder that I installed in my equipment and I use for the first time this weekend. Its installation is quite simple. Just remove the original wedge and install the Astro Sigma wedge, which comes with the holes for connecting the tripod and the mounts are red in the 3.8 screw pattern. Along with the use of Allen screws, they are much more robust and reliable. To put the Astro Sigma wedge to test, I will photograph an object that is in its best position this weekend, the Southern Pinwheel Galaxy, M83, also called the Galaxy of a Thousand Rubies. The Southern Pinwheel Galaxy is a buried spiral galaxy located in the Hydra constellation, about 15 million light years away from the Earth. 
It has a parent magnitude of 7.5, a diameter of approximately 55,000 light years, and was the first galaxy discovered outside the local group of galaxies, in the year 1752 by the French astronomer Nicolas Louis de la Caille. The galaxy has a bluish tinge in its spiral arms, many young star clusters, and is home of numerous red supergiant stars. Despite being a target close to the resolution limit of the Skyrover 60 Super ED, the galaxy M83 is perfect for testing the accuracy of the polar alignment, as the galaxy has several regions of hydrogen, which emit a red light and which require a lot of precision to be photographed perfectly. In addition to crossing the zenith, the galaxy will still cross the meridian line from southeast to northwest, which causes the torsion effect I reported in the start of the video, and will force me to make the meridional flip of the equipment. This means that the telescope will start the acquisition process facing southeast and end up pointing northwest which often causes the Skywatcher original wedge to twist. To capture the maximum of details, I use two nights doing the same workflow. Starting the captures at 9 pm with the galaxy at 80 degrees of altitude, with the telescope in ascend movement. Stopping at 10 pm to perform the meridional flip as soon as the galaxy reaches its highest point and any the acquisition with the telescope in the same movement reading northwest. As always, I use 2 minutes light frames with the ASI 183MC Pro GAN at 150 and cooling at minus 10 degrees. After using the Astro Sigma Wedge over the weekend, I only have praise to make, as the operation is very smooth and it has impressive stability. This in addition to having accelerated the polar alignment process due to the more precise controls, made in pointing and locating objects much easier. Even though I had to perform the original flip in the middle of the acquisition process on two nights in a row, the guiding graph is remaining extremely accurate with few corrections, which indicates that the wedge maintained the alignment even after severe movements. Now I don't have to worry so much about making smooth movements when manipulating the telescope when changing objects, as the wedge is very robust and maintains accurate alignment from the beginning to the end of the night. As I said before, all the adjustment components of the Astro Sigma Wedge are made of stainless steel, which makes their durability longer, in addition to being easily replaced if necessary. If you are interested in knowing more about the Equatorial Wedge and Astro Sigma's work, I will leave the contact links in the video description. In total, I got 120 light frames of 2 minutes and discarded only 2 of them due to the satellite risks. The final image is the result of 3 hours and 56 minutes of total integration, and even though it is a modest galaxy for the Skyrover 60 Super ED, the resolution was good enough. The main objective was to portray the regions of hydrogen a very striking feature of the galaxy, and thanks to the stability of the Astro Sigma Wedge, this was possible. When it comes to astrophotography, attention to details is a must. Knowing where to invest time and money to improve the final result of our images is a challenge, 
but thanks to the efforts of small manufacturers and amateur astronomers, it is much easier. I hope you enjoyed this weekend's images. I wish you all clear skies and see you soon.